there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. This is my acrylic paint stash and I recently got a couple of the new colours of the Distress Paint. I honestly buy no paint these days. These are really, really old. Some of them I have had for maybe 10 years but this is my entire stash. I try and keep just a tiny little amount of paint on hand. But I saw these in a local shop recently and they had them marked down so I picked up these three and I want to know how to use these in my card making without it being super super obvious that I'm just using acrylic paints because it's lovely to be able to use up all aspects of our stash including paints. So here I am using really technical tools, I'm just using my fingers and a piece of paper. I popped some of the speckled egg which is the lighter colour of the two and I know it looks like a hot mess at the moment but just keep going, I promise. Then the uh, this one is the salvaged patina. I know it looks like a little bit kind of blue on there, but I promise it is the salvaged patina color. And I am just mixing them in, blending them a little bit. I have some little spots of the uh, speckled egg, which I'm trying to keep that color. And then the salvaged patina. I'm not trying to go over top of either either of them. I'm just trying to blend the edges of them together nicely. And here's what I call the distract method. <laughs> From that background, which is admittedly not perfect, but still gorgeous, I'm using some of the prized ribbon color, and I just have an old gift card here, or an old credit card, or even a piece of cardboard, and I'm dipping it into that little bit of darker blue paint and then just making some marks on the paper. I am mainly doing some swiping, some little dabbing of the, um, the card up and down to make different size lines. And then this is our background, not quite complete. I'm going to use the Lunar Paste. This is the Slippery When Wet color. And honestly, I know that there these have so many amazing techniques, but this is the best thing I have found for gold splashes that stays gold is kind of nice and opaque I absolutely love this for my gold splashes so that's exactly what I'm going to do with it today so add some water dilute it down and then splash it on with a paintbrush and then I can move on to the focal point of this and this is the Floral Wonder. This is the Woodware Stamp Collection. These stamps are absolutely beautiful. They are big. They are, can be used in so many different ways. If you've been watching my channel, then you'll know that I have a lot of these. These have a great low price, price point, sorry. And they are really, really good value for money. And I'm going to use this in, again, another little different way today. So I'm starting off by stamping it with some Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I have it in my little um, stamp stamping platform. This is the Couture Creations stamping platform and it is my very, very favorite for so many good reasons. I'll leave a review, a video that I did kind of reviewing it uh, down in the description box below this video if you want to check that out. And I have put some clear embossing powder over the Versafine Onyx Black and that way it means it makes my coloring really, really easy. And the coloring today couldn't be simpler. This is always like my go-to <laughs> when uh, coloring flowers and things using some finger dobbers and some Distress Oxide inks because they go on so nicely. I am using some mustard seed and some spiced marmalade, so basically a yellow and an orange. Any inks are going to work for this. You can use pigment inks, dye inks, hybrid inks, anything is going to work just fine. And this one at the top, the, I used a little bit more yellow with mustard seed, but then I decided I wanted it to be kind of a little bit more orangey. So there's some mustard seed around the outside then for the greens I just picked out Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn and Rustic Wilderness but you don't need all three of these colours I kind of ended up putting on a little bit of the Twisted Citron just to um, give a base layer I guess and then a little bit of the Mowed Lawn but I actually ended up <laughs> adding a touch of the darker one as well now, I probably should have done some masking here, but honestly, using the finger daubers is one of the main reasons <laughs> that I actually use these is so that I can get into all those little places without having to mask, because if I can find a quicker way or an easier way to do things, I will generally do it. And now here I am going to fussy cut out this image, and again, this will make it look completely different from the original stamp, and just feels like another whole way that you are able to use the stamp um, without it looking exactly like a repeat or an um, absolute print of the last card that you created. So I am going to fussy cut out so I have all three of those flowers and just those two green foliage branches either side and this is going to contrast beautifully with my blue background that we have created. Now this is all nice and dry. I'm going to trim this down so that this can go onto a card base. All the cards that I pretty much make, unless they're kind of specialty cards, are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. 
and I'm going to trim down all the bits that I kind of would prefer to be off there. I do get asked a lot why I don't uh, trim it first before I add all the color. And that is purely so that I can kind of choose the best portion of the card that I would like to keep and I can trim off anything off the sides that uh, didn't work out quite the way I thought I wanted it to. Uh, then I'm going to use my little method here where I keep the four tabs out the side and the one piece in the middle. That way I can line it up perfectly and all the edges are even every single time. When I pop that uh, flowers on there, it really pops off that blue background and I am really loving this card even though it was so simple to create. Then I am going to use the All the Birthday stamp set. This is my favorite. It has so many different birthday sentiment options and this is my go-to well and truly at the moment. Another great thing about this acrylic paint is that I can stamp directly onto it. I am going to use some, this is a VersaFine little square ink pad and uh, I can't even remember the color. I think it's Majestic Blue. I'm not sure if they sell these anymore. I didn't, I wasn't super happy with the um, blue. It wasn't dark enough to go with the background. So I used blue, then black ink, and then blue again. So it kind of had a bluey tinge to it, but it was nice and dark. Then with any images that I have stamped in black and then fussy cut out, I go around with a black marker or a black pen. This is the um, brush markers, but anything is going to work fine. And this will make your fussy cutting look a whole lot better, like you're actually a professional and you stuck to the lines brilliantly. I am not that good at it and this does make me look good, so I need that little bit of help. I'm going to pop this up on some foam tape. This is a very plain and simple card, but so much fun to create using up our acrylic paints for the backgrounds. And you wouldn't even tell that they are paints. They could have been inks or anything. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that this has inspired you to get out all of those old acrylic paints and use them up. And if you end up being inspired by this video, please pop on over to my Facebook page. I would love to see some photos of your makes and creates. I will leave a link to that page which is called Come Crafting with Natasha in the description box below this video. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!